I still have the account I made when I was 12 or 13 years old. The email I used before I changed it. YouTube guidelines banned word within the first 30 seconds of the video. With Niall Horan, 69 at hotmail.com. I don't know who that white girl is. I just thought she fit the vibes. I mean, I know who this white girl is. I don't. I just don't know who this white girl is. Hi, my name is Shania, but I use the pen name Shanspear here on YouTube. You can call me Shan if that makes you feel better. I don't know. I didn't come up with a nickname. I know Tumblr fashion was more like indie, grunge, pale skin, pale blog, pale politics, but I always wanted to be a scene kid, especially in 2012 when Tumblr was at its peak. So this is the outfit. Ow, jump gear. <laughs> as promised, I am back on my self-righteous bullshit and am here to cosplay as a morally and financially superior person to everyone on the planet by saying I, Shanspear LLC, would never spend 44 billion dollars on a bird app and not just because i'm nowhere near elon musk's network and cringe every time i spend more than 100 dollars on groceries but because i am smart so twitter it's not doing too well right now and because i'm not a crying crypto cringe cuck I didn't understand what was going on before researching for this video. This is my first time ever saying cuck out loud, <laughs> so bear with me. I'm trying to be in Twitter character. Elon Musk used to be a very vague figment of my nightmares. Ow, oh, jump gear. <laughs> only cropping up in reality when he did some weird cringe crypto cuck shit with Grimes on Twitter for everyone to see. Or when he named his kid after computer noises. But for everyone who is too pretty to understand the plight of the weird deep sea creature billionaire, let me condense everything that has happened so far. <coughs> I don't even know if I can get all of this in. What the fuck? Okay. So in April of this year, Elon Musk, who was alleged to be the heir of an Emerald Mind empire, aired out his dirty laundry to tell us, people who did not ask, that he brought around 9% of Twitter shares. This scored him a swanky seat on the Twitter board, which sounds like a fake organization used for money laundering, and was quickly ejected from it like a cartoon trap sequence. I don't know why, I'm too pretty. So, ego bruised, back broken from the fall, elongated musket offered to purchase Twitter for $44 billion, which was apparently way over their stock price of, I don't know, not $44 billion. And Twitter sat in their Barbie Dreamhouse money laundering board, and was like, hmm, no, get poison pilled, which is an actual term I learned from NBC News and not some fake red pill, blue pill, get fucked pill thing that I thought they were making fun of. But then Twitter molded over and concluded, yeah, this guy's a loser. What a loser to pay $44 billion for an app. We accept your offer. Now, see, Elon Musk may be the most richest man on planet Earth, but he doesn't have that daddy war buck money. So we had to get financing. <laughs> he received millions from investors and about a billy from a Saudi prince for some reason, but then Eleanor Muskrat got cold feet. He put the deal on hold, citing an overwhelming volume of bots on the app, and Twitter was like, no, you already signed the deal. No takesy backsies. So they sued him, and Mouskatool sued back. It's a very rich person with a lot of money and even more free time thing to do, which leads muscle nowhere because he allegedly doesn't want to go to trial. So after some more married couple bickering and some pseudo sudation from Twitter to their fearful employees, a lozenge acquires Twitter. And promptly lays off half of the employees, including, most notably, the misinformation department. Ugh. And that has been a presentation by Shanspear. <laughs> And I say this is most notable not because they matter more or less than any other worker, but because in an alleged attempt to make some money back for the company, Elantrico rolled out Twitter Blue. For the low, low price of $8, you, a regular person sitting on their couch, can become verified on Twitter and immediately began impersonating large brands and personas. Some people naturally began impersonating Elon Musk, others found joy in impersonating controversial celebrities like OJ Simpson, and one brave, internet user <laughs> impersonated the pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly, which temporarily plummeted their stocks. So this seems chaotic, right? But it actually falls in line with Elon's business plan. See, one of the changes Elon promised after his acquisition of Twitter was the return of humor, which is why on the funniest day in Twitter history thus far, Elon Musk, a man who will never be funny in his entire lifetime, decided to shut down Twitter Blue and permanently suspend every single person on Earth. My boy Noah got hit with a three-piece. 
Misha Collins got sent to super mega gay hell again, and Twitter fell into pandemonium. Oh, what's that? I just got word through my non-existent earpiece that a second plane has hit the Barbie Dreamhouse money laundering front. Amidst the viral impersonations, comedy discourse, and mass suspensions, people really started clamoring for a new platform to transition to. They needed an app similar to Twitter, just without the town square decapitations and something entirely unlike Instagram, which is an app held together by toothpaste and reels. YouTube, of course, was simply out of the question and MySpace hasn't responded to CPR in over a decade. TikTok is TikTok and Facebook is dead. You know how it goes. So that left us with one shining beacon of hope. An app that transcends time, that knows its audience, that crashes on the regular and is too cringe cuck to ever be mentioned out loud. Goodreads. <laughs> but then we realized people on Twitter don't actually know how to read a book, so... so we went with Tumblr instead. Madison Brown did a video a week or so ago talking about how different trends are coming back in style, most notably pertaining to diet culture, and she mentioned in that video how Tumblr as an aesthetic might be coming back. You know, that grunge look, the Arctic Monkeys t-shirt, the plaid miniskirt, the tattoo chokers. But with the demise of Twitter and the realization that every social media platform kind of sucks, <laughs> it's possible that Tumblr as a whole might be making a comeback. This is getting too hot. I'm going to beat you all to the punch. Tumblr isn't coming back for me, because I never left Tumblr in the first place. I was an avid Tumblr user. I made it my entire personality from 2012 onward. Every joke, every outfit, every insufferable transparent PNG, I was Tumblr personified. I still have the account I made when I was 12 or 13 years old. And I know I was 12 or 13 years old because the email I used <laughs> before I changed it, sex with Niall Horan, 69 at hotmail.com. You don't know full body terror until you show a group of high school friends your Tumblr and in front of your crush, they read out your email. <laughs> the only thing worse than that would be if everyone found out I had a super Hulakian phase. I didn't. No, I just read Voldemort fan fiction. <laughs> so Tumblr trended for a while on Twitter, number one, in fact, because people are seriously contemplating the move from Twitter over to Tumblr. And as someone who frequents Tumblr even to this day, the correlation doesn't really make sense to me. If any app could bear the brunt of Twitter's legacy, I would think it's TikTok. Though it's more video-based instead of text-based, it has a lot more in common with Twitter than Tumblr ever could. And I personally think if I'm going to be forced to hear about the most heinous crimes in history, you should legally be required to show your face while I hear them. And TikTok just so happens to be the perfect place for that. <laughs> Tumblr is also algorithmically isolated from any other app I think I've ever used. Users decide what gets seen, what gets notoriety. And even that word, notoriety, is contestable. The prospect of gaining a lot of followers on this app feels like the antithesis of its purpose. It honestly sounds like something you'd get made fun of there, which just isn't the case for apps like Twitter where follower count literally gives you influence. I mean, at its core, Tumblr is useless. It doesn't make money, it's not particularly popular, and it was once run by people who think Benedict Cumberbatch is hot. And yet that works in its favor. Maybe not the Benedict Cumberbatch part. It's, he <laughs> it's held together by the sheer fact that its users appreciate the uselessness of how unmarketable it is. It's the last social media besides Pinterest, that feels sort of safe. The humor is also very different between Twitter and Tumblr. Twitter is sort of famous for that out-of-pocket zingy comedy that causes an overwhelming reaction in the body. Like TikTok, it prioritizes rapid movement. The minute one person gets tired of the joke, the entire app closes in on itself and seeks another. Unlike Tumblr, who is still beating the children's hospital color theory joke to death, the humor there depends not on overwhelming reactions like Twitter or TikTok might. It feels like the warm embrace of being in on an inside joke. 
you know? It's not that Tumblr is exclusionary. You can easily participate and understand the comedy if you want to, but it's certainly, <laughs> it's certainly a humor that feels nonsensical or annoying unless you had it forcibly attached to your psyche one fateful evening in 2012 like the rest of us. One of the current running jokes on Tumblr is to act as cringe as possible to keep Twitter users from joining the website. An online version of letting go of a few shots in the neighborhood to keep the rent down, if you will. And I mean, for all the satire that these posts are worth, they would have been unironically posted in 2013. So welcome to Tumblr, Twitter users. With a fucking one slur and Jack Frost shipping gif. <laughs> Some of the gifs this blog found, I don't think these have seen the light of day since like early 2012. This isn't Twitter. This isn't your average everyday site. This is Tumblr. We're crazy. We're weird. We don't fit in. We're the fangirls, the Fugoshis, the super who love. This is a hate crime. This this is a hate crime. In all actuality, just the mere mention of Super Hulock is enough to smite me where I stand. I remember what they're capable of. I remember when they I remember when they burned down the locker of shame and stepped out of the flame. The staff of Tumblr has even joined in, and I can't tell if they understand the sheer like futility of people joining the site since it's inherently useless, or if they're willing to die in battle for the bit. <laughs> Either way, I respect it. Reasons to join Tumblr number 11. Do you love inside jokes? Would you like to be a part of one someday? Well, hop on your Plinko horse, grab your blur boat, <laughs> little meow meows, and glup shittos. <laughs> That was a visceral reaction I just had. Every cell in my body just recoiled. Tumblr tweets, we need everyone to pretend to be normal for a little bit. Some user replies, please stick your fingers between the bars of my enclosure. Please, 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 please. I promise I won't bite you again. The Tumblr staff goes, bite you, bite you, bite you. Someone said, we don't need to worry about gentrification when the landlord's firing a shotgun at passing cars. I think it's a good time to mention that the staff of Tumblr introduced important blue internet check marks, which they're selling for a lower price than Twitter blue. And you can actually stack them, I think, to get like 12 check marks. This is a hell sight. <laughs> Another popular topic on Tumblr right now is the 1973 movie Goncharov, directed by Martin Scorsese. You know, the one I'm talking about. It's It has Al Pacino in it, Robert De Niro, Sybil Shepard. I actually watched Goncharov earlier this year and it quickly became one of my favorite films. So, you know, I have actively participated in the discourse surrounding it on Tumblr. It's this action movie about Soviets and Naples and they're in the midst of this great tension with the mob. I mean, I'm personally not one for mafia movies. I'm too pretty, but the visuals of the movie are just brilliant. It's like Grand Budapest Hotel meets Dwayne The Rock Johnson original movie. And it has, you know, some girl bossing in there as well. I would recommend watching it, but it's actually been banned in all of the US and parts of Canada for the undeniable homoeroticism and girl bossing done by one of the main characters. There's also the scene with Ice Pick Joe where he plugs Gontrov's eye out with an ice pick, which is really reminiscent of Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, but that's probably like way too gory for some audiences. I personally thought it was a great commentary on the patriarchal influence in politics and how neo-reputable liberal light Yagami has been growing steadily throughout Europe since the 1800s. I made all of that up. <laughs> the movie does not exist whatsoever. It's completely fabricated and yet it's been trending on Tumblr for the past few weeks. As people post fan art, gift sets, and think pieces about plot lines they have literally never seen. <laughs> it's even amassed hundreds of fan fictions on AO3, nearly overtaking the amount of works published under the avatar tag. <laughs> the joke stems from this post about someone buying like knockoff shoes and instead of the label showing a brand name like Jordan or Nike's, it just has this totally made up movie named Goncharov directed by Martin Scorsese and people ran with it. Someone immediately followed up with, idiot hasn't seen Goncharov. <laughs> And now I'm reading feminist analysis of Katya, who more than likely shot Goncharov 84 times at the closing of the movie. I don't know, haven't seen it. You know, after Ice Pick Show had a go at him. I mean, who hasn't fucking seen Goncharov? I don't know, haven't seen it. You have to be an absolute film-hating loser 
to not have seen Gontarov. You know, that's actually what's killing movies today. It's not Marvel. It's not all the foot shots in a Quentin Tarantino movie. It's the fact that you guys won't give Gontarov, arguably the most movie ever, a chance. That is gotcha racist. <laughs> All in all, I don't think anyone actually cares if Twitter descends into a fiery pit of ash and billionaire tears leading to a mass movement to Tumblr. I think it's just one of those internet things where if absolutely anything remotely funny happens, people are going to joke about it. A second iceberg could be hovering over the Pentagon right now. <laughs> Never mind, that's... That's really not funny. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on Twitter's demise, if you think it's funny or kind of sad considering thousands of employees just had the trajectory of their lives changed in the blink of an eye because of one overcompensating loser. And let me know if you're going to make a Tumblr account. Don't ask for mine. I'm not giving you the username. Make sure to follow my second channel, Shan Sorbet. Make sure to like this video if you actually liked it. Share it with your friends. I don't know. Do whatever. I actually don't care. Um, take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye. Goncha racist. Ugh. It actually, oh my god, this nose piercing does not stop trying to fall out. <laughs> this is like falling out and it's like pissing me off. Out of pocky. Pocky.